how to make the most of our potential as a country, not simply limit the damage Brexit will do and what a refreshing change that will be. My sense as I travel this country is that people have had enough of the despair and the despondency of Brexit. They want to be inspired by the hope of a better future instead. Friends, our task is to persuade them that this better future is an independent one. The Growth Commission provides the platform on which we will renew the case for independence. It doesn't shy away from challenges, and nor should it. It doesn't pretend there are always easy answers. No one believes that. But it does lay strong foundations for independence, and it busts some Westminster myths along the way as well. On the deficit, created on Westminster's watch, remember, it shows that the scare stories of Labour and the Tories are completely bogus. Even with no extra growth from independence, the deficit can be turned around within five to ten years. And it can be done with public spending rising, not falling. Friends, that... That offers a much brighter future for Scotland than Brexit decline and yet more Westminster austerity. And let me be clear about this. The SNP has fought Tory austerity since the days when it was Labour's Gordon Brown and Alistair Darling implementing it, ending... Ending the self-defeating damage of austerity is and always will be our priority. The purpose of independence is to build a better country, a stronger economy and a fairer society. The Growth Commission offers a blueprint of how we can do that. It recognises that independence is about the freedom to make our own choices. It's about equipping ourselves with the full powers to lift people out of poverty, to tackle the inequality that limits our potential. It's about the ability to use our finite oil wealth to build the industries of the future. It's about having the powers to encourage more talented people to live, work and contribute here and making sure that our young people can travel, study and work in other countries too. It's about letting our businesses trade freely across the UK, Europe, and beyond. And it's about investing in our National Health Service instead of wasting billions of pounds on trident weapons of mass destruction. The case for independence is strong and it is getting stronger by the day. Research published yesterday had at its heart a quite remarkable finding. It showed that the number of people in Scotland who believe that independence will make our economy better has risen dramatically. And for the first time, those of us who believe that now outnumber those who believe the opposite. Confidence in the independence case is growing. So as we wait for the fog of Brexit to clear, our opportunity, indeed our responsibility, is this. Not just to focus on the when of independence, but to use our energy and our passion to persuade those who still ask why. 
right now, that is the more important task. And if we do that, let me tell you this. I am more certain than ever before that persuading a majority of our fellow citizens that Scotland should be an independent country is well within our grasp. countries everywhere, Scotland faces challenges in this uncertain world, but we have potential aplenty and we have so much to look forward to. You know, I've been very struck recently by some surveys that have reported on Scottish attitudes to life. It seems we're getting happier. <laughs> Frankly, I blame the Scottish Government. <laughs> People in Scotland are also more likely to be optimistic about the future than people elsewhere in the UK. More of us say that our country's best days are ahead of us, and that's despite us not being in the World Cup again. <laughs> but the serious point is this. Our message of hope and ambition is in tune with a country that feels optimistic about the future, so let us grasp that opportunity. <laughs> 